Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. Today is October 19th, 2013. I'm Nikki Carvajal. Leading our news this evening, a motor vehicle accident early this morning on Sheep Creek Road has claimed the life of a local Fairbanks woman. Officers found that a Subaru had collided with a moose and gone into the ditch. Investigators say the driver, 23-year-old Brittany Zabriskie, died in the collision. The woman's body is being sent to the medical examiner's office in Anchorage for an autopsy. Governor Sean Parnell is urging the two entities vying for a certificate to provide natural gas to Fairbanks to join forces. Fairbanks Natural Gas and the Interior Gas Utility are waiting to see who the Regulatory Commission of Alaska will pick in December. Speaking to the Support Industry Alliance, the governor urged them to reach some kind of an agreement before then. The state wants to get a processing plant built on the North Slope to truck the gas to Fairbanks. IGU and the Fairbanks Natural Gas want the certificate to be able to build the distribution system for North Pole and the other areas of the borough. The hearings were contentious, with the two sides claiming the other hadn't or couldn't handle the job. One complaint has been that even though Fairbanks Natural Gas has had the permits to do it, it hasn't expanded its system over the years. And along with the public utility, yes. means you've been given a public monopoly. Yes. And you have a responsibility with that public monopoly to serve non-discriminately, to reach service out into areas that may not be as economically profitable as some other areas as long as you do overall have an opportunity to make money. The challenge is to uh, effectively provide a supply source of gas here in town and uh, we don't have a pipeline today and uh, you know we have to get the gas from faraway locations either to Cook Inlet or the North Slope and, and get it to Fairbanks before we consider uh, ultimately getting it to businesses and homes. A charter pilot who allowed a passenger to bring cans of beer on a flight to a dry village will serve three days in jail. Judge Patrick Hammers also fined Ken Jupe $1,500 for importing alcohol. The beer equaled about seven gallons of alcohol. A court hearing will be held later to see whether the state will confiscate his Cessna 206, though Hammers said it should be seized to send a message to other aircraft operators. In addition, Jupy's corporation, Ken Air LLC, a Fairbanks Air Charter, will also, was also fined $1,500. Jupy's lawyers argued that their client wasn't aware of what was in the groceries being placed on the flight to Beaver. However, state prosecutors said Jupy is the charter of choice for bootleggers because of his don't ask, don't tell policy. Well, Jerry Cleworth cre completed his final week as mayor, and he's proud of the improvements the council has made during his term. Year or two. Jerry Cleworth has served the city in different roles since 1987. I am, I've just been very fortunate to work with a, a staff that's, that's pretty incredible here. Um, they truly believe in public service and uh, are very, very professional uh, with the work that they do. Uh, they've made my job a lot easier and I, I think we've made a lot of headway in the last three years. They've worked to strengthen the budget and maintain the city. We are in the process of restoring uh, City Hall itself and it is always a, a joy to show people around and what we've accomplished in the last three years um, because for many many years we really did nothing uh, with the building but we're well on our way to making it more functional and aesthetically a lot more pleasing and historically accurate. Uh, the road work throughout the community uh, people are seeing some of the results of that now on what we've done on 2nd Avenue Wickersham, uh, the Bentley Trust properties over there by taking a business approach, the city has cut unnecessary costs and is virtually debt-free. The capital fund and growing permanent fund are healthy because the city supports them with money they've saved. But for Cleworth, all the effort to strengthen the city is because the future is uncertain. He's concerned state revenue will decline, leaving the city to cover more costs. Cleworth officially leaves his post during the city council meeting on Monday night. Tyson Paris Hansen, New Center 11. The Alaska Federation of Natives Conference starts next week, and the Fairbanks community is preparing for an influx of visitors. The conference starts on Thursday, but the over 3,000 people that are expected will begin arriving this weekend. Additional meetings will be held around town on Tuesday and Wednesday in advance of the conference at the Carlson Center. The Fairbanks Police Department and Alaska State Troopers are gearing up, and they have some tips for the community. We field a lot of phone calls for uh, where's, where, where are certain places at, how do I get around, just those community questions. So there's going to be uh, 
several thousand people in town that just may need directions. They may need some advice on where to eat. They may need just some real simple answers that you, just about anybody can, can answer for them. So just make sure that if you see somebody out that may need help, that may have a question, to just answer for them. When we come back, celebrations of our community's cultural diversity get underway at the Pioneer Park Civic Center, and local public broadcasting needs some of your help. We'll tell you more when we return. Stay with us. And welcome back. The 27th annual installment of Fairbanks International Friendship Day was celebrated in front of a large crowd today at Pioneer Park. The celebration of cultural diversity has been an annual event since 1987. The day was full of multicultural performances, ethnic food booths, international dancing, and colorful attire from all around the world. The goal of the celebration is to share differences and create more appreciation for each other. Organizers and participants say the day is also an opportunity for Fairbanks to come and learn together and learn more about international cultures as well. Rosalind organizes this International Friendship Day so that people who live in Fairbanks can know more about cultures from other countries and they can get together, know each other and can benefit from the interaction between cultures. We can learn from your culture and you can learn from our culture and grow. Well, not only is the Arctic Winter Games preparing for next year, but they're also hosting a video contest and poster contest for local schools, junior high through high school in the interior. This is to give students a chance to put their skills to work and real work experience outside of the classroom. The general manager of the Arctic Winter Games talked about the contest and how fortunate it is to have support from the interior schools. Well, we have it out to the schools, I believe, um, or getting ready to get it out to the schools that will be possibly participating in that competition. You know, our school programs have been able to get all the different grades involved, and it's been great in many different activities. And so it's good to get it into the schools and, and let them know about the Arctic Winter Games, too. A new car will be available for viewing this Sunday at the Fountainhead Antique Auto Museum. And New Center 11's Justice Soleil gives us a preview. A piece of history that has meaning to Fairbanks is now archived in the Fountainhead Antique Auto Museum. It's a 1906 Pope Toledo, and Pope Toledo was the very first car that was in Fairbanks. There was a total of three Toledos in the interior. Uh, one was brought here um, up by boat, arrived on a sternwheeler in 1908, coming up the Yukon and Tanana rivers. The one that was in Fairbanks was a little bit different model, a little later model than this one, um, but this one is a lot more elegant model and it's actually identical to a second Pope Toledo that was here in Fairbanks that arrived probably around 19, 1910. And the automotive pioneer Robert Sheldon ended up buying it and using it as a taxi to take people from Fairbanks out to the various mining camps. This was an exciting time for the people who brought up the first cars to Fairbanks. Many of them had never driven cars before, some had never seen cars before. They might not have come with manuals or they just did have to read an instructional manual, but they basically got these cars started and just went ripping down Cushman Street here, scattering dogs and horses and people and having all kinds of breakdowns. We're just really happy to have found this car because it did take us years to find it. Um, it's a very important car for Fairbanks and a really great addition to our museum. Justice Sole, New Center 11. Well, KUAC's annual fall fundraiser ends tomorrow, but there's still plenty of time to make a pledge. Chancellor Brian Rogers and the Fairbanks Roller Girls were on hand today to answer the phones and speak to the public. The annual event takes place every fall to raise money for KUAC, which is one of the most watched and listened to public broadcasting services in the nation. Organizers say that the funds that are donated go directly to KUAC and benefit not only the Fairbanks community, but many surrounding communities as well. It goes to KUAC, and of course KUAC has bills to pay. So we utilize um, funds from all over our community, all of our listening community, not just in the Fairbanks area, but all the way out to Nome and Toke. We have translators in Eagle and Healy, Ninana, Delta, and Bettles. And so it costs money to be able to push that signal out there to make that connection with our translator communities as well as the interior. And we're joined at the desk now by Fred Brown. Fred, what's going on with sports? We got a little puck and stick. A little puck and stick action last night. There was a thriller over at the Carlson Center. 
and uh, high school football state championships today. Two interior schools and uh, one had a heartbreaker. Come back, watch this next. Thank you.